Saskatchewan has not signed on to the federal government's climate change plan because of carbon pricing. Our government says a price on carbon would unfairly affect Saskatchewan's people and industries. Today is the deadline to get on board with the plan, and if we don't, the federal government says it could lose we could lose $62 million money for our mission reduction program. David Maines is a Saskatoon-based author, and he's written a book called The Price of Carbon. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the program. Well, thanks for being with us and during this um, auspicious time, I guess one could put it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we are on the map in our country. Um, so, but let's go back. What do you mean by the price of carbon? Yeah, the word has um, multiple meanings. Uh, it refers to the price that would be incurred by future generations in the absence of uh, effective climate uh, action plans globally, and uh, this is this is this is extreme. Um, if you uh, assess the potential for damage by uh, mid-century and beyond, uh, economists project that it's going to cost about 5% of global GDP annually, and this doesn't include um, extremely serious secondary effects uh, such as uh, water and uh, water supply and crop failures, uh, climate migration and human conflict. So that is an extreme price that will be paid by future generations in the absence of effective action. Uh, the price of carbon uh, obviously uh, clearly uh, additionally refers to the price that is required for the current generation to uh, uh, implement action uh, that would prevent serious climate change in the future. So tell me, how would the carbon price work the way the government is um, projecting? Okay, well, there's, uh, there's multiple options for carbon pricing. and. Uh, if you look at what uh, Quebec and Ontario are doing, they have uh, implemented cap and trade systems. Uh, there are carbon taxes that have, are in place in uh, British Columbia and Alberta. Uh, and the, it's not that it is coming from the federal government. That's a stopgap measure that would be imposed on provinces that have not developed their own uh, specific plan for carbon pricing. And that, uh, that uh, program, um, the way it looks right now would be uh, imposed upon Saskatchewan and this would start at $10 a ton um, and increase uh, on an annual basis uh, by $10 uh, incrementally going up to at least $50 a ton by 2022. So, and this, yeah, go ahead. this, uh, this uh, carbon tax then would be applied to the emissions potential of fossil fuels. So that's not a lot of money starting out, but Saskatchewan is very resistant to this plan. Can you talk to me about that? Yeah, one of the more remarkable conclusions uh, in the Saskatchewan White Paper on Climate Change uh, is that by the year 2022, a $50 per ton carbon tax would cost the province $2.5 billion. Uh, this, is, uh, this isn't quite right. Uh, what a $50 per ton carbon tax would do is raise $2.5 billion in revenues that the province could allocate as it sees fit. Uh, one option would be a revenue neutral uh, fee and payment system where these funds would be distributed to households, uh, farmers and industry. But again, this is up to the design uh, that, uh, of the plan that the province would come up with. Um, so the South Party has put forth the position that uh, carbon taxes and carbon trade systems do not work. Uh, they specifically cite the experience in British Columbia as evidence that the pricing system is ineffective. Um, but if you look at uh, their, uh, their evidence uh, 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 stating that uh, the BC carbon tax doesn't work, what they've done is they've referenced the year 2009 as the baseline for emissions in BC, and that is uh, the uh, post-recession year uh, where our emissions globally were very low. And, and then the, the conclusion is that since 2009, emissions have gone up in BC at the same time as the carbon tax was implemented, implemented in 2008. Um, that's, that's a kind of a skewed way to look at it. Uh, a better way is to pick 2005 and 2015 as years of strong economic growth. And if you look at those, uh, that as a baseline year 2005 and now emissions in, in 2015, in BC uh, emissions went down by 5%, while in Saskatchewan emissions went up by 8%. Uh, and then, I mean, if you just sort of 
divorce yourself from playing these numbers games. The, act, the, the facts are that absolute emissions in BC were less than that of Saskatchewan, despite a huge difference in population. And uh, in BC, the intensity of emissions is 13 tons of CO2 emitted per person, while in Saskatchewan, that intensity is 67 tons per person. This is among the highest on Earth, and it's fivefold greater than in BC. Um, and you know, to say that uh, carbon pricing doesn't work, China just launched the world's largest cap and trade system. And uh, China did this uh, because these market-based systems of carbon pricing are now proven to work. So obviously, Saskatchewan seems very resistant to the carbon, you know, tax. Is there? Is there? Is it because we are just we are so dependent on oil and fossil fuels that we, the idea of moving to wind and solar is just too different for us? I mean, what 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 would you say? Well, for uh, just uh, briefly to to uh, mention wind and solar, one of the positive aspects of the Prairie Resilience uh, Climate Action Plan is the government's commitment to increased use of renewables for power generation. Uh, they've targeted the year 2030. Uh, to increase use of renewables up to 50% of electricity supply. And this is a meaningful and specific action um, that they should be commended for. Um, but the, the issue with Saskatchewan is common to, uh, to regions that are rich in uh, oil and gas reserves and whose economy is uh, heavily tied in to traditional energy sources. And you know, uh, people's livelihoods um, and flows uh, from royalties to the government are highly you know, tied in to these traditional energy sources. So it's a challenge. It, there's no doubt about it. But at the same time, to completely uh, and, and that's hard. It's a strong word, but it's it's, it's actually quite quite real. Um, to vigorously oppose carbon uh, pricing um, is not addressing the issue. There are opportunities for this province uh, to take immediate action to uh, really ratchet down emissions here um, because, again, they're extremely high on a per capita basis. So, I mean, this would actually help our province because, you know, given that we are so strongly agricultural, having carbon taxes would help the, the, the climate. So why do you think that the government is being so resistant? Again, it's uh, it's right, right now um, the concept I, I believe from their perspective is to protect uh, the the current economy and, and protect the oil and gas uh, industry to make them as profitable as possible. Um, and yes, Saskatchewan has every right to continue to sell um, oil and and gas as traditional energy sources. Uh, and if you, for instance, would somehow turn off the tap. Um, you wouldn't accomplish anything because that supply would be met by producers from other jurisdictions. What has to happen globally is a decrease in demand for fossil fuel uh, fossil fuels. This will then lead to declining production globally, and this would include Saskatchewan. Uh, it's, it's incumbent upon the provincial government to realize that if we're going to avoid uh, future climate damage, we have to be prepared for transition to a decarbonized economy. And actually, Saskatchewan's in a pretty good shape. Uh, if you look into the distant future, we're very good at land management, forestry, agriculture, and uh, the latest innovations um, at the Unit 3 Boundary Dam for developing carbon capture and storage. Um, this technology is going to be vital um, to control future emissions. And Saskatchewan has made a tremendous effort to develop that technology. It is misplaced, applied to fo uh, fossil fuel power generation plants, but will have an important future role in production of electricity from biomass, for instance, and also in reducing emissions from uh, uh, specific industrial applications where there are no cost-effective alternatives. Okay, so, thank you so much for that, David. Oh, thank you. David Mays is a Saskatoon-based...